considering how many of us are using Windows on their PC to program. Uh, I'm just scratching my head. Why? This is so difficult. Oh, by the way, thanks to Dimitri for giving me a hand with this, because otherwise I'd be so lost. Hey guys, I got myself three Raspberry Pi Pico. Why three? Well, that was a maximum I could purchase. They are inexpensive and because I knew I'm going to live stream me playing with this, I wanted to make sure I'm not going to blow the first one up and then have nothing to show during the live stream. So yeah, I got three of them, but that wasn't actually the problem. During, during the live stream, I've discovered that the documentation is like 70 pages long, if you go for getting started guide, and 265 pages long if you want to have a complete breakdown of SDK for Raspberry Pi Pico. That's probably more than you would like to spend to read uh, just setting up a Blink sketch, right? So I'm going to help you out guys and I'll show you how to program on Windows uh, using Raspberry Pi Pico. Now in here you're going to see two timestamps. They're going to show you a uh, Raspberry Pi Pico SDK for MicroPython and for C and C++. Now if you didn't make up your mind about which programming language you want to use, go for MicroPython because it's so much easier to set up and you'll be able to jump straight into programming and enjoy your projects. But if you're absolutely fixed on C and C++ on Windows, well, keep on watching because we're gonna go through this as well. I've, men I've mentioned MicroPython's gonna be easy. So I navigate to Tony, which is a Python ID for beginners. And it's super simple, download version for Windows. It's linked to the top of the page. Don't use command prompt to install like I did on my live stream. And then open up the ID. It's worth noting that the Python 3.7, it's already included in installation, so you don't have to download the Python separately. But if you want to have a latest version, uh, then you might just download the Python as well if you want to. The first thing to do is just go to Tools, Options and Interpreter and select Raspberry Pi Pico. It should be there. You can leave the port out to be selected automatically. It's going to be all right. Then press the button on the Raspberry Pi Pico and connect it to your computer. You will enter it uh, as a USB drive and then you can install the MicroPython firmware on it. So I'll just proceed with the installation and it's only going to take a couple of moments. Now that you have a firmware on Raspberry Pi, we can confirm that it's working by running a very simple program. I'm making a very simple print statement which I'm going to execute on Raspberry Pi at Pico. Before you can run the code, you have to save it on Raspberry Pi itself. So it will execute on the Raspberry Pi and provide you output in the shell. You can name it whatever you want as long as it ends with PY. Hit run and you'll see hello not enough tech in your shell version running from Raspberry Pi. But if you disconnect the Raspberry Pi and try to run it, nothing will happen because Raspberry Pi won't know which programs run. To select that default program that's going to be executed when you connect the Raspberry Pi to power source, you have to name it as main.py. As you can see, this is the driver for LED for WS2812B. And once I save both files, main PY and WS2812B on Raspberry Pi, it will execute them as soon as the Raspberry Pi is connected to a power source. That's pretty everything that you have to know to get started with MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico. You can find the links to all the download on my page and that's going to be linked in the description of this video. There's a couple of things to download, so I'm not going to bore you with the downloading it. I already have it in a folder, so let's start installing and I'll just point out the important bits. The files aren't too big, but uh, one of them uh, is going to have a download which is slightly bigger, so bear that in mind as this will take a moment depending on your connection. When installing Python, make sure you add the 3.9 to path and then click customize, click next and then uh, install Python for all users. That's all you have to do. And we'll move the installation directory to program files. When the Python installation is done, we can move uh, to install compiler for VS code. 
there is one thing to bear in mind at the end of it. You'll have to again add the path, but also the installation will hang for a moment and it will open command window. The app might appear unresponsive, but if you give it a couple of moments, it will show a readme file and that's going to be indication that actually the installation went successfully and then you can exit the shell as well. Next up is CMake. Uh, there is no big changes here. All you have to do is go through Next and uh, Accept Terms and select CMake to be installed and added a path for all users. Visual Studio Build Tools are next and that's gonna take a moment, on you, but fortunately you don't have to install everything. All you have to do is just install Build Tools for C and C++. Also make sure that C++ CMake tools are selected Last on the list, we have uh, VS Studio Code. And again, just make sure that the path had been added as well as an option and then follow through with installation. Next up, navigate to System Environment Variables and select Environment Variables as we're going to make sure everything is there and add a couple of them. First to add, so click New in User Variables is Pico SDK Path and the value should be a directory where you're going to download your Pico SDK. To download your Pico SDK, navigate to GitHub. Uh, for Raspberry, select Pico SDK and download the zip. You have to uh, download this and unzip it into a location of your choice, but that location, it should be the location that you're going to use in a path. If you don't want to blindly type the location, use browse directory to select the folder, and that's gonna be Pico SDK. Now in user variables, open path and make sure that the paths are also there for the GCC compiler and for VS Code. If they're not there, use again browse option to navigate to corresponding folders. Uh, this is uh, folders where you would default install into. It's time to check system variables, open path variables and you should have paths for Python. If you don't have them, you have to fill them in. And you should also have paths for CMake, for GCC compiler, and also VS Code. If any one of them is missing, just fill them in. I also have them listed in my article. Don't open a Visual Studio Code from the icon. Use Developer Command Prompt in Administration Mode. So right-click to get into Run as an administrator. If you select the path correctly, if you type in code, it will bring up Studio Code, Visual Studio Code for you. Otherwise, you have something wrong with your paths and you have to correct this. Now in there, go to extensions and you have to install C, C++ from Microsoft and CMake tools from Microsoft as well. In CMake tools, go to settings, as there's a couple of changes in there. Select extension settings, and scroll down to add the following stuff. In CMake path, use CMake as your path. Then in configure environment, use Pico SDK path and navigate to your Pico SDK folder that you've downloaded from the GitHub. Scroll down up until you're going to see CMake generator and type in and make make files. That's gonna be your last change in that setting. Now close out VS Code and open it again. You can start your programming now. You're gonna need an empty folder because we're not going to use Raspberry Pi default examples. I'm going to show you how to do it from a scratch so you don't have to compile everything. Now let's go over the files that need to be included. So open a folder on your computer and then proceed to open it uh, with file open a folder option in here. Once you have your workspace, that's called workspace. In this case, the workspace is called test. You'll need a couple of files. First gonna be SDK uh, setup file for CMake. If you click on that, uh, you'll see a lot of instructions about setting up uh, SDK correctly within the uh, Visual Studio code. You don't have to edit any of that, but just make sure one of these files is included in the workspace. You only need one file uh, like this. Now, second file, it's uh, cmakelist.txt. This is the file that CMake is gonna uh, look at and try to figure out which files they should compile. Now we're gonna get back to it in a second. For now, we're going to assume that we only have one file and you just want to compile your program from this file. So the file obviously in question is blink.c and the CMake uh, 
uh, lists file should look like this. The only thing that you have to modify is the name of the project. In this case, this is a test. Uh, and you'll have to fill that in here, here, and here. And also, you'll have to add the uh, name of the file that you want to run. Since we only have a one file, then it's obviously no problem. And just uh, name it here, and you uh, can proceed to build it at the bottom. Now, the situation changes if you have multiple files. So if you take a look at my folder structure in here, I have my main program, which uh, uses a header. And the header itself, it draws from the LEDC file. So I've opened these for you so you could have a look at how they're being laid out. In addition to that, there is a folder and I have the header and the additional program file in a folder itself. And obviously Blink is still my main file. So if you would like to, to compile this, you have to change the way the CMake is gonna compile it. So in order to do that, uh, you have to replace these files with the following structure. Now for headers, so, and this header is a indirect to the LED, you have to use uh, command include the directories and the name of the LED. Now, if you want to include project files like led.c, uh, the easiest way is to use the file option and then set a variable. So this is a global variable, I named it sources, and I'm going to look at the folder called LED and I'm gonna look for everything that matches, uh, well, it has a different name, so obviously matches the extension .c. So it's gonna have a list of those files. In this case, it's gonna be a single file, led.c. And now I'm gonna modify the add executable, uh, starting with the project, then the main file, which uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is gonna start running with, and the list of all the files that's been listed in that folder that end with C. And that's the way to add your, um, or compose your C make list. And once you're ready, just make sure you select the GCC for ARM uh, as your comp complier, and then hit the build. Now the build only is gonna be a couple of moments, and you'll see that uh, if it's finished uh, with exit code zero, then you're good to go. You can navigate to your build, uh, directory and you'll find in this case test.uf2 file. This is the file that you're supposed to send to Raspberry Pi and to send it to Raspberry Pi disconnect it from USB, press the button on Raspberry Pi, plug it in, it'll show up as your disk drive and navigate to that directory when you had your uh, file compiled. So in this case uh, test and build in here and drag and drop into the Raspberry Pi it will reboot and you'll be ready to roll. You have to admit guys, that was a lot to go through and I cannot wait for Arduino to uh, make uh, RP2040 available in the Arduino IDE because it's gonna make so much easier to use C and C++ on Windows computer. Until then, you'll have to follow the set of instructions to set up your SDK and kind of live with it. I hope the update to Arduino ID is gonna happen soon because let's face it, we just wanna spend our time programming rather than messing about with the SDK. I hope this helped you guys and you have SDK set up on your Windows machine for both uh, MicroPython and C and C++ and you can start programming on your own. But if you wonder what I'm going to do next, well, you know how YouTube works, so I take advantage of YouTube tools to, to follow me there or pick one of the social media listed in here uh, so you could get notification whenever there is a new post or article on my website. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and let me know if you did it. And I guess I'm going to see, I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.